Okay, we're back. So now that we've gone through the uh, four major properties of exponents, now we're going to go ahead and combine them all in one big problem. And these are the kind of problems that you'd most likely see on a, on a test or a quiz. Um, so we're going to do four examples. And as I do these examples, it probably might be a good idea for you to stop the video after I've given you the problem, give it a shot yourself, and then um, turn the video back on and watch as I solve it and see if you get the right answer. It always helps to practice math yourselves. If you simply want to watch the teacher do the math and try to figure out how to do it, that's probably not the best way to learn math. Your best way is to practice, practice, practice. Okay, so let's start with, um, well, let's jump right into it. How about we do, we're going to take two, well, let's use some different variables here, u squared, v squared. We're going to raise that to the fourth power. And we're going to divide that by 2u to the fourth, v to the fourth, times 2uv. So that's our problem. Okay? So we're combining a lots of different properties here. Here we have the uh, power of a product. And we're also going to have some uh, product rule where we add exponents. And then we're going to have some uh, quotient rule uh, exponents where we have to do some subtraction. So your best bet here, I'll let you, if you want to solve this problem, stop the video now before I solve it. Okay, so let's solve this problem. Your best bet here is going to be to expand this first. You can't do anything with the exponents until we have this out of the parentheses. So let's go ahead and do that. 2 to the fourth, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. It's not 8. Not 8, not 8, it's not 8. That's 4 times 4 is 16. So this is 16 u to the eighth, v to the eighth. And remember, the power of a power means you multiply. 2 times 4 is 8, and 2 times 4 is 8. Now on the bottom here, we've got our product rule. 2 times 2, just deal with the numbers the way you would normally deal with numbers. That's 4. Now here we go, u to the fourth times u. Remember there's an understood 1 if it's not written. 4 plus 1 is 5. And then v to the 4th times v. There's a v to the 1st there is also v to the 5th. Okay? And then our last step is to do some simplification. Treat the numbers as you would normally treat the numbers. What have I got here? I've got 16 divided by 4. Well that's 4, isn't it? Sure is. 4 over 1. Okay, what about my u's? I have u to the eighth divided by u to the fifth. The rule is subtract the smaller one from the bigger one, 8 minus 5, and put the answer where the larger exponent was. The u to the eighth, the bigger one was on the top, so we've got u to the third. And then our v's, we've got v to the eighth over v to the fifth, same problem. 8 minus 5 is 3, so v to the third. So 4 u to the third, v to the third would be our answer. Ready for another one? Well, ready or not, here it comes. How about m to the third, n to the fourth, times 2 m to the third, n to the fourth, over 2 m to the fourth, n to the third, all to the fourth. Stop the video now if you want to try it yourself before I give you the answer. It's similar to the first one. And again, our first thing we're going to want to do is simplify the numerator and the denominator separately before we start dealing with our quotient rule. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, where's a one in front of here, isn't there? One times two is two. We have m to the third times m to the third. What do we do for our product rule? m to the third times m to the third. m to the three plus three, which is m to the sixth. Four plus four, n to the fourth times n to the fourth. n to the four plus four is eight. And then on the bottom, I have two to the fourth. I did that up there. I did that in the first problem. That's 16. And then we got m to the four times four. This is a power of a power now. It's not the same as this one. Not the same as the numerator. 
4 times 4 is 16. And th n to the 3 times 4 is n to the 12th. We're almost done. First thing we're going to want to do is simplify. Well, the last thing, actually. We've got 2 sixteenths here, don't we? What's that? Isn't that 1 eighth? Sure is. It's 1 eighth. Okay. Let's deal with our m's. Again, our quotient rule said that we subtract our smaller exponent from our bigger exponent and leave the answer where the larger one was. 16 minus 6 is m to the 10th, isn't it? 16 minus 6, m to the 10th, and since the 16 is bigger than the 6, we're going to put that answer down the bottom, m to the 10th. And then our n's, we have n to the 8th over n to the 12th. 12 minus 8 is 4. And since the 12 is bigger than the 8, we're going to put that answer on the bottom, and to the 4th. There's our answer. 1 over 8m to the 10th, and to the 4th. And again, remember, if everything on the top cancels out, because this actually cancels with this, doesn't it? Makes it an 8. If everything on the top cancels out, you have a 1 left over. Don't, don't leave it blank, and don't write 8m to the 10th, and to the 4th, because that's not correct. Okay? Let's do another one. Let's do a quotient, power of a quotient. How about we do x squared y to the third times 2y over 2x to the fourth y to the third. And this will raise to the fourth power. Now, the really nice thing is you can do this a number of different ways and they're all correct. I personally, there's two major ways. First way is to raise everything inside here to the fourth power before you do anything. Raise everything to the fourth power. That's method number one. Method number two would be to go ahead and simplify this mess inside the parentheses first and then raise to the fourth power. I prefer the latter. I prefer to simplify what's in the parentheses before I start raising things to the power. Okay, let's do that, since that's the way I like to do it. Okay, here we go. Let's look at the numbers. We've got a 2 on the top and a 2 on the bottom. Guess what? Those go away, don't they? That's 1 over 1. So we have no numbers left on the inside. Let's look at our x's. There's only an x squared on the top. And on the top we have a y to the third times y to the first is y to the fourth. And then on the bottom, what have we got? We've got x to the fourth, y to the third. Now it's becoming pretty easy, isn't it? Now we use our quotient, uh, I'm sorry, our quotient rule, yes. Okay. 4 minus 2 is 2. And the 4 was on the bottom, which means my answer, x squared, would be on the bottom. And then we have 4 minus 3 is 1, so y to the first, which would be our answer. 4 is a bigger number than 3. We're going to put that on the top. Now it's a pretty easy matter of uh, raising everything inside the parentheses to the fourth power. Now we're going to do the power of a quotient rule y to the 1 times 4 is y to the 4th, x to the 2 times 4 is x to the 8th. There you go. Let's do it the other way, just to show that you can do it either way. It really doesn't matter which way you do this problem. Move this up here a little bit. Go back to my, go back to my pen. We'll turn that off. There we go. All right, what if I would raised everything inside this first to the power of 4? Let's do that. We would have had, well, we actually don't need these anymore, do we, if we we're going to raise everything to the fourth power. x squared to the fourth is x to the eighth. y to the third to the fourth would be y to the twelfth. 2 to the fourth power would be 16. y to the fourth, 1 times 4. And then on the bottom, we would have had 16, 2 to the 4th. x to the 4 times 4 is 16, and y to the 12th. The 16s would have gone away. I would have had 
uh, x to the eighth, y to the 12 plus 4 is 16 over x to the 16, y to the 12th. Now our quotient rule, 16 minus 8 is 8, and the bigger number's on the bottom, the bigger exponent, so I'm going to put that on the bottom. And my uh, y's, 16 minus 12 is 4, so my larger number, which is 16, the answer goes on the top. Same answer, doesn't matter how you do it. Now some of you may have noticed, and if you did, really good for you, that I actually could have gotten rid of other terms here too to make my life more uh, simpler. Notice there's a y to the 12th on the top here and a y to the 12th on the bottom. You could have gotten rid of those and you would have had your y to the 4th on top all by itself to begin with. Then all you would have had to deal with was the x's. And actually you could have done it up here too, couldn't you? You could have taken this y to the 3rd and gotten rid of this y to the 3rd. And you would have had your y all by itself on the top and then your 2 and your 4, your x squared over your x to the 4th for your x's. Does it matter? Really doesn't. Do it how whatever way works best for you. Um, let's do one more. How about 2x to the 4th to the 3rd over 4x cubed y to the 4th times x squared y to the 4th. Let's do that. We're going to go ahead and raise this everything inside the parentheses here to the power of 3. 2 to the 3rd is not 6. Don't you dare write 6. 2 to the 3rd is 8. x4 times 3 is 12. On the bottom here we're going to do some multiplication. All we have is a 4 there for our coefficients. There's a 1 in front of this term. x to the 3rd times x to the 2nd is x to the 3 plus 2 which is x to the 5 y to the 4th times y to the 4th is y to the 8th. And let's do some simplification. 8 divided by 4 is what? 2? Sure is. Okay, and then we've got our x terms here. 12 minus 5 is 7. The 12 is bigger than the 5, so I'm going to leave that answer on the top. And then our y doesn't have any partners. It's all alone. Just stays just like it is. So there are some examples of how you can combine the uh, properties of exponents that we did, the uh, four different properties of exponents into a single problem. Next up, zero power problems, and then negative exponents, and then fraction exponents, rational exponents. Coming up, thanks.